Welcome to Allen High School. We are in the midst of our discussion of buffers and we're about to do some buffer calculations. So we're gonna dive right in here. And first off, if, if you wanted to do a buffer calculation, and this is so common for those of you, if you're gonna go into biochemistry or pharmaceuticals, controlling the pH, uh, is very important in studying, you know, protein, biochemical reactions, uh, pharmaceutical things involved in medicinal chemistry. So this is a, a pretty critical concept to wrap your minds around. I think it's important that we go over it carefully. Now, what if we wanted to prepare a buffer? And our goal is to prepare a buffer at pH 10, and we're going to use Kb equal to 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth. Now, that's reasonable, remember, because pOH would be equal to four, and we want the pKB, right? pKB is three point something if we just estimated it. We want the pKB to be close to our pOH. Remember that, pKA, pH go together, pOH and pKB go together. So we want to do that calculation. I just wanted to show you that that was a, a pretty reasonable choice there as part of our learning to estimate these things. Now, two ways we can do this. We can do the Henderson-Hasselbach way, or we can just do the Ka way, or the Kb way in this case. So the Henderson-Hasselbach, P-O-H, is equal to P-K-B plus the log of our conjugate acid, which we're going to use some sort of a salt of the conjugate acid here, over our base. So we just discussed that our pOH is four. If you take the negative log of this value, so if I take negative log of that value, I get my pKb, and that's 3.268 plus the log of my conjugate acid over my base concentration. I don't wanna write that whole thing over again. This is a little simpler. Now, if I subtract from both sides, all right, so if I'm going to bring this over to this side, then take the opposite operation. So 10 to the power of four, so that's how I get rid of the log, minus 3.268 is going to equal that ratio of my conjugate acid over my base. And so in this case, I'm gonna get 5.4 to one. Now that's a ratio. It doesn't mean that that has to be the actual molarities. That's the ratio. It means I'm gonna have four and a half times my conjugate acid over my base. Eh, not so ideal. But still, I, it's going to work as a buffer system. Now, let's try the KB method. In this case, KB is going to be my concentration of my hydroxide times my conjugate acid over my base. Okay, Maybe it would help if I wrote that reaction down for you. It'd be CH3, that's called a methyl, one carbon methyl group. NH, it's a weak base, you have to add water as a reactant, and that's going to give me CH3 to NH2 plus, plus OH minus. Okay, so that's my conjugate acid, that's my weak base, and there's my hydroxide, okay? Now, my KB was given as 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth, my OH, if my P, pOH is four, my OH is one times 10 to the minus fourth, right? If there's no decimal place, there's a one there in front, times my conjugate acid over my base. Remember, this is my base, that's my conjugate acid, and we're gonna get the same thing. You still end up with that 5.4 to one ratio. All right, let's go on to the next part. What if I knew the molarity of my dimethylamine? How much conjugate acid would I use? Well, to get the conjugate acid, I'll go ahead and write that again. CH3 to NH2 plus, 
I need that molarity over, boy, that's horrible handwriting. Sorry about that. Over my molarity of CH3 to NH. Remember, it had to equal 5.4 to 1. Well, what this is saying is I want this to be equal to 0 0.750. So that means my CH3 to dimethyl, two methyls, NH2 plus is going to equal 5.4 times 7.750, so that means I'm going to need a 4.05 molar solution together. I'd have to put those, mix those together in one volumetric or what, however you're making it to get my buffer. Now physically how do I get that? Well, we need some sort of salt. So this is a salt of the dimethylamine. So hopefully you realize now that salt is going to be soluble. We're going to dump the chloride and we're going to make that positively charged there. That just to show you what that conjugate looks like. Now to make it, I need that whole salt. I have to carry along the chloride with me to make it from the salt. So if I need 1.000 liters, I'm just going to call that dimethylamine. Now remember, I wanted 0 0.750 moles of this per liter. And if you get the molar mass of that, and if I did it correctly, <laughs> I'm hoping somebody will catch any errors I made. There's usually at least one or two of you who actually try this on your own before you watch me do it, which is always a good idea. So I would add 33.83 grams of this buffer, and I need 1.00 liter of the salt, CH32, and it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, okay? So I don't have to worry about that. NH2Cl, all right, times 4.05 moles per one liter, times 81.56 grams per one mole. So I would add, wow, a whopping 330.32 grams of my conjugate acid, the salt. Okay, so that's physically how I would make it. Now, that has a pretty high buffer capacity because four molar and almost one molar is actually a high buffer capacity, but there really is a lot of conjugate there relative to the original week, okay? So, decent buffer. We're gonna just run with that one. Now, that is the end of our buffer calculations. It's a little bit of a short video, but I think it will help. I wanna uh, save this video for buffers and move on to just some random rice. And I want you to see how these all are going to relate back to our titration curve. All right, uh, even these buffer calculations, remember we had that buffer zone. They all relate back to that titration curve. So until then, when we get to see lots more rice, this is signing off.